Hi, my name is Jen. Welcome to my channel, all of my plants. Today I have plant chores. It's been uh, over 100 degrees in the greenhouse, like 40 Celsius, 140 point Celsius, 105-ish it was earlier today. Um, so that's stifling, and that's why I haven't been uh, out there to record, like to continue the plant tours. Um, I don't get along with the <laughs> with the extreme heat. Uh, anything over about 90 and I'm out. I'm out. So anyway, I have plant chores. I have uh, some philodendron subhastatum here that I'm going to try to get on a pole. I'm going to try to get two on the same pole. Um, some alocasia that looks a little thrippy. Uh, it's alocasia boa. I don't know if you can see the spotting on it. It's probably focusing on anything but the alocasia. Uh, but anyway, it's got some spotting that looks a little... Is that a thrip right there? A thrips? No, it's not. Um, I, I don't know. I sprayed it down, but it's still... It looks a little thrippy. So, I'm going to uh, repot it uh, for one, and then I'll just continue to treat it. It's also kind of clustered in here. It looks like for sure there's one, two, three, four, five. And I also see some corms aside from that, so I'm just going to kind of give them room to breathe. Uh, I have philodendron river juvenile or el choco red. Um, it's just it's a lot going on in there. It also has spider mites currently. So I brought it in from the greenhouse to uh, separate it possibly, treat it definitely. Um, I'm probably just going to treat it with neem oil and I'll probably have to redo it but that's fine. Uh, in the greenhouse, I spray with, it's, uh, it's not bios, what is it? Acorn or something? I don't know what this stuff's called. I put that in my sprayer along with fertilizer, and I just kind of spray everything, foliage and soil, so it gets a soil drench with it as well. Um, and I, I, it won't eradicate anything, but it does kind of help keep che things in check out there. So I've got that to separate, and then I've got, um... What is this? Um, Alocasia colica. Oh, it says right there. Pharaoh, Pharaoh's mask. Somebody did write it on the pot. Um, and it also has it has heavy spider mite damage. The spider mites might be gone now. I'm not sure. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and repot it. Um, it's got a lot of little hitchhikers in the pot. I guess you can see the little green guys. So <clears throat> that's what's on the agenda. May or may not get that on. Oh, and I have... Um, Philodendron gigas here, just kind of propagating in water. And it has the tiniest roots, but I might stick it in some LECA. It's, I think, three cuttings here. So the gigas was doing great until it wasn't. And it looks like it's also had a run in with spider mites. Spider mites, oh yeah, I see webbing and all kinds of things. Are those actual spiders or are they spider mites? Definitely has spider mite damage. But either way, um, I want to get it sorted out. Um, I have a, another one kind of, oh, it used to be over there, now it's over there, <laughs> um, that was propagating, but it's got new growth. It's also had spider mites. Everything has spider mites. Everything. Everything. Um, at least it's not thrips. Yeah. <laughs> For now. So that's what, oh, and I have, uh, some propagations here. Uh, what do I have? Um, looks like a Monstera albo that's not very albo. Some Melanocrysum wet sticks, which is always um, Monstera subpinata. Um, I might pot some of that stuff. I'll probably pot, uh, pot up the little Monstera subpinata. Probably nothing else, because that one's not looking very impressive. I don't know what's in the other one. Oh, there's a philodendron pink princess in the other one that's been waiting a long time to be potted up. Maybe I'll stick that some like a tube while I'm at it. Let's see. Oh, I don't actually have that up here. It's downstairs. And it's way past bedtime for everybody. I don't... It's not late. It's 10 o'clock. But I'm not going to go down there and make a whole bunch of noise digging that out of the cabinet. Whew, I am hot. Am I red? I feel very red. I'm pretty red. Might actually turn some of these lights back on. They've turned off for nighttime. I'm also sorry if you can hear the fans. I have three running at the t 
present at the current moment. Let me turn some of these lights back on because it's kind of dark. I think first I'll put the moss poles together since I'm going to need those and that might be the easiest thing that I'm doing. Let me move these. This thing is driving me crazy out of the corner of my eye, flopping around in my pocket. Alright. Sphagnum moss. These are just some of the uh, little plastic poles off Amazon. I like them because they're easy peasy. Oops. And they don't require me to cut wire, so that's good. Sometimes they have like a plastic coating on them you have to pick off. Do these have it? These don't seem to have it. I don't think they do. That's mighty convenient. Yeah, I don't think they do. No, okay. I don't know if I've ordered this from this particular company before. I'm trying to find a company that sells them consistently the same size and width. Because I've ordered before and had them a little taller or a little shorter or a little wider so just enough of a difference that they wouldn't stack together neatly. Why am I so crooked? I'm still crooked. I'm sorry. Okay, so now we're askew, but I don't think we're crooked anymore. You can see what I'm doing behind this uh, bin of wet moss anyway. I've been trying to make this video for like days, but just life has been happening. Well, actually not this particular video. I was going to start with um, my alocasia, which I don't know how many alocasia I have. It's actually not that many I don't paint. It's only like maybe 20. Wow, that really went together too easy. Um, but yeah, and some of them are outside. It's not many. I have some planted in the ground. Also not many. Look, now it's coming apart. I had to say it's going together easy. Some of the tab holes aren't broke all the way through. Okay, anyway. But yeah, so I've been putting that off because I just, the heat is not my friend. It's funny, when I was younger I preferred summer, but I think that's because it meant break from school and, you know, all the wonderful things. Party party time, all that stuff. Now I prefer the winter. <laughs> I'm sure I do. If I had central AC, I might feel differently about that, but I don't have central AC, so here we are. These holes almost seem too close together because you nearly pull one tab out trying to get the next one in. Oh, come on, please. Haha, victory is mine. Okay. And I'll stuff this when I pop it. So, I'm going to just make one for now. I was going to put the philodendron El Choco on a pole, but I don't really think I'm going to have enough roots to put it in a pot that's big enough to accommodate the pole and not inundate the roots. So, I'm going to hold on that, I think. Yeah. Oh, I need a pot. There we go. I'm sure this pot will be fine. Did I even say that it was a philodendron so fast auto? that I'm trying to put on this pole. I don't know. I need to move this out of the way. Why did I set that up there? Jump in the gun. It's my normal state. Anxiety and rushing. <laughs> All right, now where did I put the plant that I'm going to uh, be working with? My phone. I'm sorry if you can hear this. I hope that this uh, little muffler here is helping and noise reduction. Be my friend today. Please. I just realized that the pot this is in says something. Oh, it says anthurium fingers, which would have been this plant. 
which ain't looking good. Um, anyway, <laughs> it ain't looking good. It looks thrippy too. Um, these haven't been in here this long, so I'm not... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I'm not worried about the soil, but I forgot I need to fill the pole. and get the pole in place before I start dumping plant material in here. Huh. That would be helpful. Alright. This thing is in my way. Can you hang somewhere else for now? Right then. I have no idea whether this has systemic in it or not. This potting soil. I can't remember what I potted last, or... If I had, ooh, it's fragrant, or had a uh, systemic in there, or what. But I'm gonna funnel some soil down in here. I maybe should have used the deeper pot. I'm gonna go with it, I've already started. I have a pot that's a little bit deeper than this one. <clears throat> to accommodate more roots. I don't know how much, how much, how many roots these have, but I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? They've been potted for a while. I think I cut them around Christmas. And they sat in water for probably a little too long, like everything else I propagate. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put the soil in here. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but... I don't know. Maybe I've read a root or something. Just in case. Oh, okay. No, I haven't read any roots. It doesn't look like... Oh, maybe some. Yeah. Always. Not many, though. Okay. This is good. And it doesn't smell bad. And it looks like it was already in a smaller pot before I put it in this pot. Maybe I just put this one directly in soil. Oh, that root was fine. My bad. I'm just pulling on it. Yeah, I really could have um, gone with a deeper pot. But we're here now. I've committed. <laughs> I'm committed to this. I don't think it's going to be mad that it's in a tighter space as long as I give it adequate water, right? And it, the roots can grow into the pole, too. Alright. So what this one looks like. This one has two growth points. It was one... One cutting, but it's growing from there... With a spider web. From there and also up here, so... That's fun. Oh, I had this one in pawn. There's still pond stuck to the roots. I'm not worried about getting everything off. It looks fine. It looks fine. Mm. I can't tell where aerial roots are going to come from, so I guess I'm going to kind of tip it slightly to one side or the other. Just so that, maybe that way, so that it has room to grow still. I don't know how well two is going to work out on one pole because this plant was pretty gigantical when I chopped it up. That was part of the reason I chopped it up. That and it was just, it was pretty beat up. It had fallen over quite a bit. It didn't look superb. Stunning. It was not stunning. But you know. That, it's a lot easier for me to overwinter plants if they're smaller. Because I just have a lot. <laughs> I really do like this plant, though. I find it, it's probably like top three easiest philodendrons that I have. Like with no exaggeration. I've, I didn't really have any pests on it until out in the greenhouse this spring. It had spider mites, like an infestation. So every time I see anything on plants here lately, I'm like, spider mites! Because I've seen spider mites this year on things that I normally don't see them on. Like, they're, they're problematic. <laughs> I don't know why they're so bad this year. 
But then again, I've also had mosquitoes and wasps around this year worse than normal too. Maybe it's, I don't know. It's been very wet so far. Very rainy. Hot, humid, and you know, all the things that I guess it was like. And a lot of people say, oh, raise the humidity. Spider mites don't like it. No. They, they love it. They're like spa day. <laughs> if your plants are actually dripping and saturated, then they don't like it. <laughs> Humble opinion. Like the humidity in the greenhouse. At least once a day it's up to 80%, maybe 90%. Depends on if I watered that day or not. And up here lately, I've got windows open 24-7 rain or shine, it's probably been 60-70% humidity, there's still spider mites. So I don't really think humidity is the, the cure, but I have started using um, neem oil again. I had kind of like just gave up on the neem oil because of the smell. I don't love the smell. I know it's not that bad, but certain Certain smells to me are more offensive than others, and neem oil is one of those. It smells like garlic and ass to me. <laughs> I don't, how do I know what ass smells like? I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me questions. <laughs> I have kids. I guess that's how I know. <laughs> but either way, I just I, it's one of those smells that I'm like, ooh, that's pungent. <clears throat> and so... I kind of lost my scissors. I kind of avoided it for a long time, but um, I've been using Captain Jack's. So I don't know. I hear that pests can build a resistance to things. I guess I do. If I take Benadryl to sleep, I stop being able to sleep after a while. This is what I normally use um, Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. It's a bone eye product. Um, I think the neem oil that I'm currently using is also a bone eye product. But, um, yeah, I don't know if it's that my, my friendly neighborhood spider mites are becoming resistant to it or what. I'm not even going to zip tie this on here or velcro this on here just yet. Because it is kind of leaning there and I can see... Oh, maybe you can or maybe you can. I don't know. But I can see where um, some adventitious roots are starting. Um, and I didn't have a problem with this one grabbing the pole, so I'm not overly concerned that I've got to hurry up and strap it down. It might just figure it out on its own. So we'll see. <clears throat> I don't know where my scissors are. I'm the most disorganized right now. I was going around cutting some dead leaves off stuff earlier. A couple of my Hoyas had like whole dead branches, you know, just the ones in, in hanging pots. Because they like to do that occasionally. So, so I was like snipping them off. And I have no idea where I laid those scissors down. I don't know if it's in this room, some other room, outside. Who knows? Who knows? I'm not the most organized lately. I think I just inhaled a fungus gnat. And I don't know why, because this is saturated with mosquito bits. I brought in some new plants lately, so that might be why, actually. <clears throat> I think they hitchhike. Otherwise, I don't usually have too many problems with them. If I remember to consistently water with the mosquito bit tea or mosquito dung tea or whatever, I swear by it. Takes a few days before you really know, I mean it's not instant death to adult gnats but it, it keeps them from breeding in your potting soil your moss poles your you know whatever substrates I also use it in my semi-hydro plants the ones that are in pond or in LECA so I swear by it I really do but you got to be consistent and keep up on it or you're not accomplishing much Pack it in, pack it in. 
Let me begin. Tell me what's this in? No. Nope. <laughs> well, I'm losing it. You can ignore me. So that's all I'm going to put in there for moss right now. Yeah. Because uh, the nodes are way down there. And it's less moss that I have to stand there and try to hydrate. Actually, I don't stand there anymore. I take, I have a sprayer. I take the wand, drop it in there, let it go. And then I come back 10 minutes later, pull it out, and everything's wet. It's wonderful. It's magical. All right, so I'm calling that guy done. I don't think I need the moss anymore. I'm pretty sure I don't. All right. Let's see. Well, I have a trash can right here. Why am I dumping the trash and everything else? Okay, I'm going to mess with the allocation now. I don't know how that camera hasn't ever heated yet. Okay, um, this one says alocasia boa. So, right, yeah, I'm not familiar with it. But it's uh, decided to make babies all of its own accord. And it has some hitchhikers in it too. And not a whole lot of roots coming out the bottom, but it's got some. I don't know if we're focusing at all. Sorry, I keep moving it. Shoo, I am warm. Okay. I need my bin again. <laughs> my used dirt bin. Dirt. Soil. My bird's downstairs screaming at 10.30 at night. For what reason, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> wow. Very nice roots. I guess we'll go corn hunting while we're here. I'm not super worried about getting all of this off, but like I said, this one is the one that looks kind of thrippy. And, um, has some hitchhikers. Oh, there's a corn. It's in the tiniest little corn. So small. It's okay, we'll tuck it back in there, it'll be fine. Yeah, there's some corns in here. There's another one. Sounds like it's raining again. That sucks. I canceled my satellite TV. Random conversation. Oh wow, it's got some root rot down in here too. Like at the very bottom. Um, but yeah, I canceled my satellite TV because I don't actually watch TV. Which isn't to say that I don't watch stuff on like Netflix. Like I'll, I'll watch some shows every once in a while. Um, but normally the TV is just background noise. My husband only watches like one channel. And it's news. It's all bad news. You know, my dog just opened the door, helping himself in here. Which means that the birds can hear me and they'll just scream. Just hang out there for a minute. But yeah, it occurred to me that I was paying I don't know, a hundred and some odd dollars a month, which my my two year contract or whatever inter introductory rate just expired a couple months ago. And uh, mind you, I don't have any like premium channels or whatever. It's just like their basic package, and I wasn't watching it anyway. My husband's like, "Well, you could call and probably you know tell them you're gonna switch or do this, that, the other, and they'll probably give you." cheaper rate again or, you know or we can switch it to my name and probably get a cheaper rate like I just don't care to <laughs> I don't watch TV uh, like I said I do watch like some shows on Netflix and stuff like Bridgerton oh yeah I watched that um, Wednesday I watched that too um, Lost I'm rewatching Lost right now because, I don't know, that's that's my shit right there. <laughs> I like Lost. And this will probably be the... Th oh, did I break that? Yeah, I did. Did it come with any roots? Not many. I accidentally snapped that while I was digging around in the root wall. It's got a leaf, though, and a little bitty root. It might be okay. But anyway, this is probably the 80 bajillionth time I've watched Lost all the way through. 
well, not quite that many. Maybe the third. Like when it was still coming on TV, I was watching it then. And um, maybe one other time since then. This is a corn with a corn. Looks like an old corn with a new corn. Oh, I just dropped another tiny corn. It's okay. I'm just going to go with that one. I got a little pile of corny forms. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know. I just kind of get lost in some shows. That and I've been reading a lot. So not only am I watching Bridgerton, but I read the books. Mmm, slut. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I finished reading the books. I think I started a month ago. Uh, I am a speed reader for sure. Oh well, there was nothing nothing in that form. It's just turned to paper. Just a stump down at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a heck of a reader. Okay, that has some corms coming off of it, so we're going to plant it back and healthy roots. So I have like a whole list of books that I'm starting to read. Lots and lots of them. Like, it's funny because I, I love literature and I did um, take several classes, literature classes, you know, at the institutions of higher learning, but um, there were a lot of books that it seems like everybody else has read or had to read in school and I didn't. Well, I dropped out of school in the ninth grade. I did. I dropped out and I went and got my GED when I was 15. Or, well, you have to wait. They don't let you take the test at 15. Um, I think you have to be 16. You're, I don't think you're legally supposed to drop out at 15 either, but I did. I got lost pretty easy. I've had an interesting life. <laughs> but anyway, but my point is, for, for how much I love to read and stuff, like, I have never read, like, The Scarlet Letter. I think some people had to read that. Um, a lot of the, you know, classic literature. Um, I never had to read any Edgar Allan Poe, which I, I did that on my own much later. Um, Jane Austen. Never read any of that. I still don't think I have. Um, but anyway, so here later in life, I'm like checking some of that stuff off my list now. Because, in, like I said, I, I wasn't present for high school to read that. And then in college, I guess they just assume you've already read that sort of stuff. Like I read, I didn't read any Shakespeare. Have very little interest in it. Look at that, that's not bad. But anyway. <laughs> Um, like the stuff I read in college was different. You could kind of read whatever you wanted to read and, um, like plays, but it was, it was more modern plays like, uh, A Raisin in the Sun. I read that. Um, and I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. I read, um, Antigone. I don't know. It, it's weird the things you... The things you miss, and then also the things that you don't miss. Um, having a slightly different educational background than your peers. So. Anyway, I'm not going to put this back in there. Am I? No. I'm going to put it in a different one. I'll put some of these smaller ones in here. A couple of them. It'll be a nice full pot that way, maybe. Is that a thing? I think that's a thing. It'll fill out pretty quick. I'm sure of it. Um, and as far as it being thrippy, I'm just going to stick it in the bathroom of shame and, like, spray it pretty much every day. Because thrips hide in the plant tissue, not just on the leaves and whatever, but I, I think, I believe that the eggs are laid kind of in the tissue. So, could be wrong. 
But that's what I hear. Don't believe everything you hear, but don't discount it either. <laughs> so, just in case, right? I don't know. Alright. That guy's good to be watered. More pots. I have some down here. What did this have in it? Ripsalis rhombia. Uh oh. When I talked about my ripsalis, I don't remember talking about a rhombia ripsalis. Flat leaf species with wavy or notched leaves that can be reddish if grown in strong light. Leaves can be three angled, as in triangle. Mm. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Well, that's why I didn't pull the sticker. Oh, I got it. I was going to say, that's why I didn't pull the sticker off. I couldn't get a hold of it. Okay. I didn't overheat, but I killed the battery and didn't realize it. Uh, the pot that I was pulling the sticker off of, I ripped that pot accidentally. So, yep. Um, do I go bigger or smaller than what I should? Do I have anything slightly bigger than that? But not as big as that? Okay, this is only slightly bigger than this, but I'm going to do that. Yee. Oh my gosh, what did I do with those corms? I think I just scooped all the corms and threw them in the trash. I did. They just looked like regular dirt to me. I can't even see them in here. I threw them on top of this pot of random soil. Oops. There's one. <laughs> I am so not with it. There's one. <clears throat> okay, well I found four. I don't think there was over many anyway. <sighs> but I rescued four. Now I'm going to put them in a pot, the small one, with um, a couple of the smaller plants that I separated. Okay. <laughs> Back on track. Doing great. Being fantastic. My brain is not working lately. And I really just don't have anything to say for myself. I could try, but... I did repot this a little bit lower than what it was, because there was a lot of corn sticking up on this particular one. A lot of its uh, under bits were showing. And I know that's kind of how they grow over time, but I when I repot them, I always pot them a little bit deeper, if that's the case. Doesn't seem to make them angry, so that's what I do. But yeah, there's that guy. I hope that's not thrips. If it is, I guess, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. Alright, the, the ones that were sitting up here while they, while I was waiting for the camera to cool off because I thought it overheated, I took them and put them in the bathroom where I was watering them and saturating them thoroughly. This is a piece of stump that has some corms coming. Hmm. Okay, so I have these two here. This one has hardly any root. I don't know if that's something you can say. This one has some root. A little bit. <clears throat> and then I've got this corn that's putting off a corn with a little bit of root. It's a larger corn. And this which was the end of the stump and has a couple little corns trying to come off of it. So, I don't know. I don't know if that'll do much of anything, but we're going to pot it up anyway. <clears throat> Trying to get enough soil in there to kind of hold them in place. 
on that one side while I tuck these down on the other. It's going to be right up against the edge of the pot. I don't love that. That stump, I'm going to bury that whole thing, but just barely below the surface. And then I'm pulling the corn just so it's not leaning on the side. The one that I said had some roots. Okay. So that's what that's looking like. Phew. That really doesn't have much root. It's okay. I'm going to throw it in the cabinet and cross my fingers. Most of my other alocasia are doing really well. I guess you saw the ones that I got in the trade. I unboxed them. They're doing really, really well. They're growing like weeds, literally. So, and then I'm just going to take these corms and poke them down with the pointy bit up. And they'll do something or they won't. I know some people peel the corms. I... Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I mostly don't. I don't see that it makes too much difference, so I don't worry myself about it. Some people might disagree, and that's fine. You do what works for you. <laughs> but I'm not concerned that these forms aren't going to sprout, and I'm not, you know, praying that they will. It's fine. Whatever they decide to do, I have plenty of that particular plant, which is, what was it called? Boa. Alocasia boa. So, yeah, I'm not going to fret about it. And I'll water those in in a minute, and I guess we're going to mess with this African mask, which has heavy spider mite damage on that leaf. Heavy. Like, I, maybe you can see it. Um, I have already treated this, but I think, in general, I will have to keep treating it. And um, I don't think that repotting it could hurt, because it does have a fair amount of hitchhikers down in there. It's just weeds that have gotten in there. Um, but yeah, so that's why I'm repotting it. Then why not go corn hunting while we're at it? I don't think these spit out corns as easy as like some of the other like true alocasia. I believe this is colocasia. I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Pharaoh's mask. Did I say African mask? It's Pharaoh's mask. I don't know. Maybe I didn't say anything. But yeah, it does, um, it will put off corms eventually, but I don't think they're quite as fast. Um, it has more roots than I thought it did. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> that's a pleasant surprise. Now the cat wants out. It's always something. Yeah, I'm not seeing any corms yet. I think I'll let this cat out before he knocks on the door the whole time I'm in here. <laughs> Meow! Yeah, the cat is fantastic now, by the way. He's got to have an appointment to, uh, be modified. <laughs> so he doesn't pee all over my wall or spray all over my wall, because he is an indoor cat, he's never been outside, and I would rather he didn't ever go outside, so. My other two cats are outdoor cats, I guess they're mine now. Um, outdoor, indoor, I mean, they can come in anytime they want the female Olive, the greenhouse cat. She rarely ever comes in. Rarely. Gus, the, the mostly white one, he comes in pretty frequently. He mostly just eats the little black cat's food. <laughs> and then leaves. Maybe comes in for some head scratches. Yeah, there's zero forms in this. Not a one. <clears throat> Even though it's pretty well rooted. Pretty well rooted and enthusiastic otherwise. But anyway, um... So yeah, I've got to make him an appointment for that. That and flea control is just that time of year. I haven't really seen any or felt any, but I don't want to. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just a stump down here. I just ripped up the carpet 
in my, it used to be my living room, now it's currently the bird room slash craft room, whatever. Um, it wasn't making such a great craft room though, because it seems like the crafts I like to do um, need good ventilation. <laughs> that room doesn't have a single window. So, um, yeah. Not bad roots, but yeah, no corms is it's kind of surprising to me. Should I be surprised? No, not really. I'm not that surprised. It seems like, like I said, colocasia just take longer. I don't know. That needs to get much larger than this. This is a very young plant, not at all mature. So, sorry, I'm just like rolling some fibrous bits off of the the base, the stem. I guess it's where old leaves were come, had come from. Old leaves, that and it's got this, oh, this that I want off. It was, I guess, where it had shot off this particular corn and that piece had just rotted away. The, the base there. I don't know, feels good. I'm gonna put, am I gonna put it back in the same pot? Oh, yeah, I am. It's got a fair amount of root for this pot, but I'm gonna put it in the same pot. Just some fresh soil on it. And I'm aware that it's gonna dry faster now that it's got new bark and stuff in it, but that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's probably going to go outside anyway, where it's going to get watered quite frequently. I'll just go ham with the garden hose, like I do with everything else. Or for everything else. But, at least we're weed free, and maybe we managed to knock some of the spider mites that may have been in the soil out. Maybe it'll slow them down a little bit. I'm probably also going to cut that leaf, the one that I said would had heavy spider mite damage, because the others really don't. It's just that one. The new leaf is kind of really curled up, which Pharaoh's Mask, it kind of does lean back on itself. I don't know if you've seen one that's mature, a really big one, but um, this one's not quite there yet. But yeah, that's the new leaf, so it's really curled back. And there's no spider mite damage or anything on it, but it's not really mature enough that I think it would have that, is it concave or convex, that look to it. Um, so I don't know, but I am going to cut off, it's the oldest leaf that has, if I can catch it, that has all the spider mite damage. I'm just going to pinch it off. Um, I don't think it's going to need it. I don't think it's going to miss it. It's going to be fine. It's going to grow pretty fast. Yeah, it was like... pretty heinous. No, we're really showing how horrifying that is. It didn't really have the veining on that, that leaf. It does on this slightly newer one. But yeah, that's what I like so much about Pharaoh's Mask is that, that dark veining and the way it just kind of leans back. I don't know, it's just very pretty. Very pretty. I do like anything dark on foliage. It's downright seductive. Alright, so that's that guy. Oh, those are both of my allocations that I was working with. All of my allocations, all two that I was working with. I've been treating a lot of them for spider mites lately, it seems like. This one here, I don't even know what this is. No tag. I don't think anybody told me what it was when I got it, but this one here had spider mites as well recently. Not bad enough to really do any damage, but I could see the, the webbing down in the texture of this plant. It's dry. It's thirsty. Um, I haven't had it that long. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's not dragon's breath, and it's not silver dragon or dragon scale, whatever they call it. I don't know what it is. Anyway, it needs water. 
Whew, it's still warm in here. Okay, this is the Philodendron El Choco Red or Ruba Juvenile. I am exceedingly warm. Whew, let's put that leaf in there. And this one here, I just want to kind of sort it out some and maybe give it a better chance for maybe one or two of these to mature because it's just a cluster. I mean, it's pretty dense. I just showed it not too long ago, I think, at my philodendron tour. It, it's doing fine, but I think it would do better if there wasn't quite so much competition. I don't know what's going on down in here. That's not as rude as you think, either, for, for all that that's going on in the pot. I mean, there's some roots, don't get me wrong, but I think we can do better. I think we can do better. I think I'm going to put one of these in the LECA. And we'll see how that goes. I don't have any pawn right now. Oh yeah, I do, but it's not clean. I haven't, I haven't boiled it yet, and I'm pretty sure I had root rot on the plant that was in there. Um, it was one of the plants I had recently converted, so it had grown new roots, but all the old roots, of course, died, so... Oh, I know this has got a plug in it, too. Yeah. You can feel it in there. Uh, somebody made a video not too long ago talking about death plugs and how they aren't death plugs. They're fine. Everything's fine. My problem with them is that the soil around it will be wet, and that plug will be bone dry still. Or vice versa. And that's why I don't like those plugs and insist on peeling them off, or pulling them out, or etc. So maybe they're not death plugs, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to continue to get rid of them. The soil around them is always more compacted. Whatever they're made out of, peat. It's like, it's hard in there. Like, this here is it that I'm tapping with my finger. And it's definitely a different texture than the rest of the material around it. No, I just don't like it. I don't like it and I don't want to leave it in there. <laughs> it's pucky. All right, I am definitely tearing up some roots here. Definitely, it really didn't have much for seven plants. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think seven. I guess we'll see when I rip them apart if this one's going to come off easily. Put it on. It's so cute. It's a tiny little guy. Sorry, I'm holding everything a little bit high. Also, eating my hair. It's warm, though. <laughs> These are definitely tissue culture. Not mine, I didn't do this. I think the only things I've ever done in tissue culture were Philodendron and Florida Ghost. Um, Monster Salt Picana. And Daps is Silver Hero. I think that's all that made it. I think everything else had some sort of contamination. But those ones did good. They went kind of nuts. Um, but yeah. I didn't do these. Somebody else did. Oh, oh, oh. We got a little bit of root with that one. Not a whole lot, but a little. I'll take it. Oof, even, well, a little bit more with that one. I've been putting this off because I think the last time I potted, repotted one of these, it really hated everything <laughs> about it. So, I'm surprised more roots aren't coming off now that I ripped those off. Uh, what do I got? Four more? So yeah, that's three. Four more. I 
Oop. That one definitely lost some roots. It's not a bad looking plant though. Sorry, I'm, I keep holding them way up. <clears throat> one of these is so tiny. There's three, three here still, and one is just minuscule. Minuscule. It's right there. Can you can see it. It's a tiny little guy. That one came with a little bit of root. Is this little guy gonna cut? Is, is he all root? <laughs> Oof. Alright, he might have to go into the prop box. I don't think I'm gonna get to plant or, yeah, pull anything out of there and plant it, but I'll probably stick him in there and we'll see if he survives. He really doesn't have much going on of his own as far as roots go. This guy's left him a little bit of root. A little bit. Got a curly leaf there. They were so jammed up, like. I'm just pulling off sheaths. Um, they couldn't really unfurl leaves very well because they were just pressing into each other a lot. Yeah, I was thinking about putting this guy on a pole, and I really could at that size, but the roots is what concerns me. There's not ever much left after ripping them apart. Mm, I'm going to put them in a slightly smaller pot, I think. This is a bit smaller. Maybe this is more appropriate. Actually, I'd go a smidge bigger. I'm going to go with one of these guys. Yeah, that's room to grow. That and, trust me, my soil is way chunkier than whatever it was just in. It's going to drain pretty quick. Pretty quick. That and in the greenhouse is going to dry out pretty quick, so. We might lose some of these lower leaves. I'm going to leave them, even though they might just fall off because of getting water toward the base of it and the base of the actual stem. The base of the petting only stem where they meet. I find that some philodendrons will keep them forever and others are just like, no, I don't like being wet there, thank you very much. And I'll just, like, rot. But that's okay. I haven't actually had, like, the plant itself rot, just kind of like the petiole where it meets the stem. Phew, we're not wanting to stand great after all that trauma. It's a little wobbly. But I also didn't plant the roots very deep, so I think it'll be alright. Everybody cross your fingers for my alchocos, my river juveniles. All right. Who's got the best roots out of this? Is it this one or this one? I'm going to go with this one and I'm going to put it in. I'm going to get rid of that lower leaf. Maybe a couple lower leaves. Yeah. And I'm going to put it in. This is the one I'm going to put in. Like a, I am going to give these a hose. Get some of that dirt off. Dirt. I keep seeing dirt. Soil. The soil. The potting mix. Yeah. Um, hold on. I'll set that aside. We'll get that. Get to that after we pot these guys up. This doesn't have much root. So we're going to put that in one of these little clear cups. So we can spy on the roots. I might actually remove this lowest leaf. <clears throat> Just so I can plant it that much deeper and hopefully not rot it. On a mess. I'm getting this everywhere. <laughs> this being potting soil. Alright. That way we'll be able to see if they're growing, because I love to spy on the roots. I love it a lot. 
So that's two. Huge piece of bark. Um, whew, this really doesn't have much roots. Move a couple lower leaves, give it some room to to spit out more roots if it wants to. I guess I'm gonna put that in the same size. Get them apart. Yeah. So hopefully I haven't killed all these. <laughs> I'm really gun shy with this plant. There's a couple of them that I just haven't had a whole lot of luck with. Like generally I do okay with philodendrons. I'm pretty confident with them until they prove to me that I shouldn't be. Like Melanochrysum and then Tordum and Palmei. Oh, now the, now the camera's overheating. I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay, so I washed these and I took the other, the ones that I had already potted up and put them uh, in the tub to be watered. Started watering those. Leca. I don't know if that leca's clean. I have some new leca, I'll just use that. I'll just rinse it well while I water. So I've got this little bitty pot here. Um, says self-watering. It's got a long wick. Sorry, I'm going to pull it up into the Leka sum anyway, so... Oh, I don't want to put that in there yet. Not if I'm going to rinse the Leka, sort of-ish. Just because it's a clear cover pot and you can kind of see it. I'm just pushing the wick down in there so it's not sticking up quite so far. I was going to scoop. I'm going to scoop it. Scoop it. Ooh, it's dusty. Hydrogen it says it's like a it's like a lightweight expanded clay pellet. Oh these don't say lightweight. It's Mother Earth brand. What do you say? Made in Germany. Has anybody heard that song? I I can't remember where I heard it, but I heard it. Barbara's Rebarbara. <laughs> I guess that's German. I don't know why that pops into my head right now. I could not tell you. Is this, they both have about the same amount of roots, which isn't a whole lot. Maybe one of them will make it. But anyway, my bird loves it. Jake, the greater sulfur crested cockatoo, he thinks it's great. Yeah, Barbara's Rebarbara. Sounds like gibberish to me. I don't really know any German. I feel like I just heard a car door. I know a little teeny bit of a few languages, but German is not one of them. Uh, yeah, midnight, car door. I don't know, I can't see who even might be here. From this room. I don't like how this one's flopping over. I don't have it deep enough. If at first you don't succeed. <laughs> Got some Leka out and try again. I was happy with this one. This one here. It just doesn't have much root. Pull a leaf off and put it even deeper. We'll see how that goes. Maybe that'll hold it a little bit better. Mm -mm. Getting like that everywhere. Story of my life. Am I only happy when I'm making a mess? At least that's probably what my husband would tell you. <laughs> I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying. Alright. That's not fancy, but that's what we're going with. These are the hardest pots to get into the reservoir. Actually, that wasn't that bad. Okay. Why did I do that? I put it in there, even though I've got to go wash it in. 
I'll burn that bridge in a minute. I still have this that doesn't have much root. And then one more teeny tiny thing. Alright, I'm going to put this one in moss and this, and this one I'm going to stick right in the prop box. Yeah. Yep. Look out, little baby. Little cat sitting on my moss. I'm sorry, dude. There's plenty of other places to chill. Ooh. Like over there. I guess that's the good thing about songs in foreign languages. Sorry, I'm still thinking about Barbara's Rebarbara. Bar. Rebarbara. <laughs> you can't get the lyrics stuck in your head because I have no idea what they are. <laughs> eh, anyway. That little cat has become a menace. It just goes around teabagging my other cat. He teabags the dog. He's just teabagging. If you don't know what teabagging is, don't ask me. I won't tell you. Don't Google it either. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just setting that on the shelf back there underneath some light. And I'm going to just tuck this into that prop box bin thing. It's not really a box. It's round. Is it still a box if it's round? It counts. It counts. Gosh, this was supposed to be a Monstera elbow, and it has zero elbow. Right? It's all green? Yeah. It was a Monstera elbow node, but it's all green. It's not very exciting. And I, it's been in there for quite a while. I keep chopping on my Monstera elbow, hoping that it will do some elbow things, but it hasn't yet. So I'm giving up on this. I'm not going to like just throw it out. I'll, I guess I'll pot it. Oh, you know what? Let's put that in Lekka too. Since we're here, I'm just gonna put it in a regular pot and like put it in a saucer. In my experience, monsters do pretty good in Lekka. Oh, gosh. I'm dropping it everywhere. The cat seems like he's like, yes, drop that lecker. I am going to slightly cover the stump because it really doesn't need it anymore. I mean, I don't think it's going anywhere, but it's not relying on that to survive at this point. Maybe it is, because it's the only place that has roots. The new growth doesn't have any yet, but I don't think it'll be long. Alright. So I slightly covered that stuff, it's fine. And this guy, I'm just going to pinch him down in here. Because it's high enough humidity, I don't think it's going to matter. There it is! Right there. I think you'll be okay. Did you see that? I don't know. I don't know. Even with the monitor, I can't see. <laughs> but I'll get those potted up a different time. It's just that late. Like I said, midnight. After midnight. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go water things real quick, and then I'll be right back. Flush things through, etc. Barbara, 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 come out. Oh, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. We live there now. We'll just really, really flush it, I guess. Okay, so we accomplished this much. I wanted to get these uh, philodendron gigas into something, but they really don't have all that much root. Like... It only has the tiniest little nubbin sticking out. So this is actually the biggest cutting, or the one with the most leaves. Um, this was the original leaf, the bigger one here. And then I had two others. Um, 
one only has the tiniest bit of root and then this one has slightly more. It's not a load. I don't know if you can see, but so I am going to wait a little bit longer on these guys. Uh, of course, they never go back in the same way they came out. It's the first time I've really pulled them out to look. But yeah, I'm going to wait a little bit longer on those. I was going to put them in Leca, but I think I want the roots just a bit longer. Yeah, I was going to put them in here in Leca, but I think I'm going to wait on that. Um, everything else is situated. I'm going to go put them back in Gen Pop. <laughs> and hope for the best because a couple of them, like I said, I know had pests. But probably the other stuff does too and I just haven't noticed yet. <laughs> I don't know, I spray everything every time I water it with the same mixture. Um, and it's basically just uh -huh, kind of an all-purpose fertilizer and arbor. I know I said acorn or something. I don't know what I was thinking. It's arbor. It's a, got a. It's a fungus fungicide. Is one bottle. I add that, and then also there's an insecticide. Um, so that's what I use, and I spray them. I every time I, I water, I also spray the plant. Sometimes if I see anything on the plant, I'll also spray the plant, whether or not it needs to be watered. So. And it seems to be doing okay. It's not eradicating anything, but maybe I think it even says for suppression or control. We'd say that. That's fair. But yeah, I'm going to put all this stuff away and I'm off to bed because it's 1230. I'm off to watch TV. Even though I said I don't watch TV. I'm going to go watch Lost. <laughs> Yes, thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you were either able to accomplish something yourself or just maybe relax and watch or listen. Yeah, that's it for me. Come check me out again soon. Bye.